All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from a sunny, well, a bit of cloudy San Diego today and, and delighted to be joined from the other side of the country in the DC area by Mara Brenner. How are you doing, Mara Benner? Very well. Thank you so much, John, for having me. Of course, of course. And uh, Mara spent 15 years at corporate level reporting to CEOs of a, a CEO of a $2 billion national healthcare company, successful small business entrepreneur, worked in teams, and now is affiliated with the GW Center for in Integrative Medicine, where she leads their corporate wellness program and incorporates her training in areas such as meditation, mindfulness, mind, body, spirit techniques, inner spiritual. Qigong, Reiki, medical intuitiveness, and more, which is phenomenal. And what we're going to talk about today is, is leadership, but you know, modern leadership and how things like self-awareness and emotional intelligence and all of that are, are so critical. And so, Mara, let, let's get let's get straight into it. Um, we're, we're looking and the work that you're doing, we're, you're looking at leadership in a very different way than maybe traditionally it has been looked at. Because let's face it, traditionally we have celebrated, you know, strength and almost like almost like that strength, resilience and almost closed off. Like that's what we're looking for. We're looking for someone to follow who just looks strong. Correct. Yes, you're absolutely right. And a key component has been um, really not only getting the business acumen, because that's still important, it's still mm -hmm. critical, but the other component is looking at everything that a leader is doing holistically. This is a word that's being used, if you listen carefully, we're using it in financial organizations, we're using it in education, we're definitely using it in healthcare, but it is a component of leadership that's also very important because whatever's happening in your personal life any obstacles that you're having is most likely happening also in your work life. And so to address those head on through an, uh, uh, an approach of self-awareness and then self-regulation is so critical to be successful these days. Yeah. And what I like about what you're talking about there in this holistic approach is, let, let's face it, if we just take medicine for a moment. I mean, particularly in Western medicine, we have been very, we've been the opposite. Like we keep things separate. If I have something physically wrong with me, I go to the GP. If I have something mentally wrong with me, I go to a psychiatrist or a therapist. But never the twain shall meet. It's like separate tracks. It's not like everything is interconnected. And I think, I, and I think we've started to discover, thankfully, about you know, I mean, people have known about mind body forever. But in the West, we've, I think, we're starting to come around to that idea. But that, but that in a work context, I think that's a whole new frontier. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm wearing two kind of two hats today. One is that I am a practitioner with the GW Center for Integrative Medicine. And you're absolutely right. In healthcare, I think customers, you know, clients, our patients are asking for a more holistic approach. And so definitely at the GW Center for Integrative Medicine, that's a key component of what they do. They say, OK, you came to us because you had a toothache. But let's see what else might be taking place here and how we can help you. And that's mind, that's body, that's emotions, and that's spirit. That's the whole of the person in whatever way they wish to talk about it. But that also includes leadership. So I, my business is True North Executive Coaching, and that is also another component is how are you showing up from a leadership perspective? And most frequently, it's like looking deeper at are you self-aware? Are you really working with your with your awareness to also regulate what's taking place. Let me explain a little bit better maybe, is the fact that good leaders have known how to do this and they probably did it intuitively without really understanding what they were doing. But I was listening to your podcast a couple of weeks ago and I really enjoyed the discussion that you had on Steve Jobs and how mm. he use meditation, right, as a way of getting what I call those downloads, those hits, because the mind is wonderful. It has, it helps you with data and analytics, and it's very much needed for your business acumen. But the other component is your special sauce, how you're connecting in with that intuitive guidance or that creativity. And that's what Steve Jobs did, and he did it so well. The other one that I really appreciate is Albert Einstein, and mm -hmm. he talks about really that the intuitive mind is our sacred gift and that the mind is the rational mind should be our faithful servant 
But here in the United States, we honor the mind, but we don't know how to connect into that intuitive guidance. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I would agree with you. I think we have, and I, and I think that's, and it's probably not just a problem in the US, but because we've become so driven by, you know, data and technology and all of this, that some of these innate human things like intuition, we have kind of pushed to the side. And let's face it, as you said, the best leaders have always been highly intuitive and, and can you know, keep their pulse on an organization and know when to say the right thing, know when to be tough, know when to be more uh, accommodating, know when people need like a, you know, a pat on the back as opposed to a, something else. Uh, uh, but, but you're right. I think we underestimate uh, and have pushed aside a lot of these innate human things that are so, so critical. Right. And it, it gets into whether or not you're going to be a great leader. So, you know, you know, books that we've had out about great leadership talk about this. They don't necessarily give you the steps for how you can begin this journey. Um, so the, you know, the books from like 1990s, even Jim Gordon's book on good to great mm -hmm. talked about how the best leaders were intuitive, how they were able to like live their values, how they were optimistic, which is a core trait of this, um, how they were able to think out of the box. And more and more right now, companies are needing to really change their services and products faster than they've mm -hmm. ever had to. So this skill set is becoming more critical as we're starting to move forward. So I think that's part of the whole interesting aspect of this too. Yeah, and, and I think you, you raise a really, a really critical, interesting point there is because things are moving so fast and you have to upgrade products and services and take a look at AI. I mean, just it's just bulldozing everything in front of it. Um, in order to be able to react nowadays is you have to be able to unlock and tap into all of the intelligence in your organization because there's so many specialist uh, specialist um, uh, things that need to be done that you know you can't possibly know everything as a leader not that you could anyway but nowadays you i think the most critical thing is how do you unlock and tap into all that knowledge and skills in your organization and bring that together quickly and efficiently mm -hmm. and how are you as a leader coaching that and yeah. being aware of it. And that's another key component. So one of the aspects is, you know, you're having about 50 to 70 thoughts a day. And as a leader, are as you go through those thoughts, are they beneficial? Are they supporting you? Because a lot of what I'm seeing as blocks in leaders that then impacts their team are aspects that are really mental blocks, such as imposter syndrome that takes place, mm -hmm you know, the ability that you are not able to uh, articulate exactly what you need. It may be showing up in your personal life, but it's probably showing up in your leadership skills too. And that impacts getting your team prepared to move forward with what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So becoming more aware of those aspects, I think is what's so critical. So your Steve Jobs knew he could go away, meditate, really kind of connect in to what it was that he wanted to create and then could come back and really work with that. And so the first part is becoming very self-aware of how you connect in with your creative aspects, how you connect into your intuitive aspects. And it's different for everyone. That's just what's so unique. So I have some clients who ride a bicycle and at the end of their bike ride, they get all these downloads. Mm -hmm. Or I have someone who takes a shower and that's how they get their downloads. But for others, it's meditation. So that's one aspect of it. And then it's being aware of emotions like anxiety that are keeping you from moving forward with those great ideas that you're having. Or it's something like a limitation of something because your mind is trying to keep you safe and secure. So is it, for instance, something that's keeping you from moving forward? Because when you pivot to something so unique, you're not really sure, is this really something I want to do? Mm -hmm. And it's about tracking that then too. And then it's about how you're showing up for your team as well. Yeah, I think there's so many, uh, so many things that you mentioned right there. I just may, um, one, um, just to give people an illustration of mind body is, uh, is i mean there are your your body you know has ailments we all do you know maybe you have a disc that's slightly out of place or something but it's you know maybe it's painful at some stages but it shouldn't be debilitating right but if you have other issues going on your mind is quite likely to go and and 
focus everything onto that disc and suddenly you're debilitating pain and all it is doing is protecting you. Your mind is protecting you from these other issues that are going on. And so being able to uncover those other issues, suddenly, you know, you're suddenly not so much pain. And I think that's to your to your point is I think now within organizations, because they're more complex, because you have to move faster, because there's like five generations in the workplace, because they may be spread all over the world, the way you did things, aren't you aren't going to be able to do them anymore. So as you said, maybe you have imposter syndrome, maybe you have a lot of anxiety around that, you're going to communicate all of that, unfortunately, if you don't get ahead of it. Right. And really, the point goes back to, you know, the basics with the airline industry talks about putting the mask on first, your oxygen mask before mm -hmm. you put the oxygen. Yeah. It, a great leader, you need to first be aware of what's taking place for you and making sure that you're um, ready to show up as the best leader you can be. And then that's going to help your team get motivated, get behind you to move forward with things that they want to do as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's both aspects. Mm -hmm. One of the key techniques I do is I ask leaders to think about their maybe top two stressors that they're having at that moment. And you know, an, an awareness exercise is saying, okay, let's do a meditation. Now tell me where on your body is that first first stressor that you're feeling and how do you know it's there? And so they'll say something like tension or um, it's uh, it's tight. Um, and they'll, sh they'll say it's in my heart, but that's how I'm knowing it's tension or it's tight. And those words, tension and tight, even help explain it. They yeah. give it a description so that when I repeat that back to them, they go, oh, I wasn't even aware of that part of it. This is all exercises to help you bring in your awareness. And then it's a matter of, OK, how can we best help you to regulate as a leader? And what else are we needing to see? So we go through exercises like that. That then helps them in their, believe it or not, it really helps them succeed um, as being the best leader they can be for mm -hmm. their organization to move forward to. Yeah, no, I, 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 no, I, I love that. I love what you just outlined there. And the, the great thing is, as you, as you pointed out, is your, if you listen to your body, your body will tell you these things. Even if you don't think, you think, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not anxious, but your body is telling you, no, you are. There's phys physiological reactions going on. So the evidence, the great thing is the evidence is there once you, once you point it out to people. One, one thing I wanted to ask you, Mara, when you work with, with leaders, right? I think one of the biggest challenges everybody has today, and that is being alone with their own thoughts, yeah. right? And in order to be self-aware, introspect, all of that, you have to be able to do that. But you have this lovely little phone. You have all these other things. You have all of these distractions. So you never have to. And the world seems to be constructed to make sure you never have a second to yourself. So when you work with those leaders, how do you persuade them that they have to take time out to be with their own thoughts? Yeah, you know, that's a great point because basically you've got to want to do this work. It takes patience. It takes, you know, um, being uh, prepared to really spend time in the quietness rather than multitasking, yeah. which our mind loves us to multitask, yeah. right? Which we can't do really, let's be honest. Yeah, we really can't do it. So it's, I have to meet that client wherever they are. Um, and as an example, maybe I start them off with doing some physical um, types of movement and kind of the qigong is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Yoga is a good example. So when I have someone who is really um, in, and let me let me just go back to the basics. Really, the uh, back if you recall in seventh grade, I think you probably had biology, and it was the autonomic nervous system, right? So we talked about you're in fight or flight, and those mm -hmm. leaders are very much in fight or flight. And your mind controls your, that fight or flight response. And so as a result, your body's tensed up and it's as if that line's going to jump out at you. And for most of the people here in Washington, D.C., they're in that fight or flight response and they don't even know it. So right. their shoulders are tensed up. Everything's tensed up. So I have to just kind of chisel away at that to get you over to the other side, which is your parasympathetic. It is where you can rest. It's called the rest and digest. So it's where your digestion works and you're you're able to sleep better. And that if you get a balance between those two states, it's called homeostasis. And it's mm -hmm. actual, true. It's it's balancing the body. So when you you have a leader who's so caught up in their fight or flight, it's going to take a bit to work with them and mostly physical 
um, movement and exercise is the best way to help slowly bring that across or, or bring them back over. It's funny, I have people who say, and it, the other part to this is the mind is very much tapped into that fight or flight response. Yeah. And your intuitive or your creative side is more um, with the rest and digest. So I have people who say to me, Mara, I get up every morning and I meditate for a half an hour and then I get anxious throughout the day. And why is that? Right. Well, if there's 24 hours in a day and you're 23 or you're 23 and a half of them, you're not in a meditative state. You're not over in this rest and digest state. You're going to be anxious. And so it's a matter of incorporating small techniques throughout the day to help you get back to that state of homeostasis overall. So yeah, I know, and it makes it makes such great sense, and and I think that uh, it's it's such a, a profound thing because yeah, some people do say, well, I have this great morning routine, and then you wonder, yeah, but what happens the rest of the day? Um, and to your point is, you need to have tools at your disposal um, for for different points of the day and in different circumstances that arise. And I think the other thing too is. Uh, is, is more obviously there's, you know, it was starting before COVID, but COVID I think accentuated it or certainly accelerated it is this return to, you know, the need for authentic connections, right? Authentic relationships and, and being authentic. And it's funny because it's like people need to, people, a lot of people struggle with that whole idea of like, how do I become authentic? And even people are saying like, Oh, let me, I'll teach you how to be authentic. And I would think, well, that sounds authentic or right. Okay. Somebody is going to teach you to be authentic. Mm. Uh, but but struggling with that, what from your point of view, like what is when an, when a leader is being authentic, what does that look like? Yeah, so um, they're living their values. Um, that's a core concept of what they're doing. And so living their values is understanding what are your values. That's that's something that I walk through with individuals because often they're not quite sure what they are. The other day I had a client. And um, she was surprised that one of her values was having fun and she was not having fun at work at the moment, right? So it's, it's really making sure that you can identify with that value system. And as a good leader, what you'll do then is once you know your core values, that's where you're gonna show up authentically if you begin to really live that. And you use that when you're motivating your staff because that's what's gonna come across most authentically with the staff too. So I talk about how to communicate that out um, and how to really begin to make sure that that helps motivate your team and in communications with whomever you're having, you want that to come come through as well. So I think it's an excellent point. You know, you also kind of raised another point that through COVID, there was this work-life balance situation that took place. Just another piece of that was uh, there's been research from doc, uh, from Rutgers University, which is tremendous. And, uh, and um, much of our healthcare system is starting to look at it. It has eight dimensions of wellness and well-being. And four of them are the internal ones that we've been kind of talking about, mm -hmm. mind, body, emotions, and spirit. But the external include your environment. Are you safe? Is there clean water, clean air for you? Um, financial, are you financially okay? And then the other two are social. And that community component is so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone like me who does most of their work virtually, you have to kind of see, hey, how am I doing? Checking in with yourself because you want that community involvement. You want to be able to, to say hi to people and still stay actively engaged. So I find that when I'm giving people this eight dimensions and the eighth one I should mention is your career or what what kind of gives you purpose. Right. Um is, is really checking in with folks to make sure that if they are working virtually still, that they are being able to socially engage and be active because that's so critical right now. Yeah. And just the, the last piece that, that you just mentioned that is the purpose piece. And I think this is this is something that a lot of people sleepwalk through life and, and, and even it doesn't matter either. You could be in a leadership position, you could be in a different position, but you've never really asked yourself why what's the purpose? Why am I doing what I'm doing? You just kind of assume, well, I'm doing what I'm doing for a paycheck to pay for these other things. But is that really your purpose in life? I mean, at the end of the day, maybe it's, you know, put your kids through college or whatever. That's a purpose. All right. They're, that is a purpose. That's different from just saying I'm earning money to do this. That's a purpose. But I think we don't spend enough time trying to figure out the purpose for why we're doing what we do. Yeah. And I, you know, a bigger concept for me, and I've, I've studied different spiritual practices. The one thing that they all talk about is really, it's as if we're here to evolve and to learn. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think we do put a lot of focus on purpose. Like I have to find that exact right place I'm supposed to be. And what I say to, to the clients I'm working on is you're right where you're supposed to be. <laughs> now the question is, where do you find joy? Where do you find happiness? And how are we going to make that happen? Mm -hmm. It's a process when you're learning and you mess up and you weren't perfect. It's okay. Like that's part of what we're here to do is evolve and grow. So um, I mm -hmm. think that's a big concept for folks to recognize to and understand. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I think evolving absolutely. Uh, you should always be looking to 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 uh, to move forward. And I think that's probably you're probably right. Probably a lot of people feel like very stagnant, and and feel like life is. Do you feel like their life is in limbo? Because especially because let's face it, we spend an awful lot of time, you know, waiting for things like oh, you know, there be maybe there be interest rate cuts later in the year, therefore life will get better. And in the meantime, we're just going through the motions. You know, and that's one of the things that surprises me every time is I get someone who just got a big promotion and they're so excited and I'm excited for them. And I say to them, how are you going to go celebrate that? And they think, I don't have time to celebrate. Yeah. Well, no, that's what life's about is go celebrate yeah. those big successes. It always surprises me how they haven't thought through just taking a moment to enjoy the success that they're having because life goes by so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Another component. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we could get into the other one. That's probably where they've received, they've got the great job, and now the imposter syndrome kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much uh, so, John. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Mara, this has been fantastic. Um, all of Mara's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Great. Thanks so much, John. Again, um, I am with True North Executive Coaching. And so I help with that holistic approach of helping individuals. Of course, I do leadership business acumen as well with that. And then, as you mentioned, I also help out with corporate wellness through the GW Center for Integrative Medicine. So thank you very much, John. Yeah, perfect. Well, listen, thanks again, uh, Mara. Thank you for watching and listening. I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.